Rupert, well, let us turn to Israel after negotiations went to the final hour before a deadline. Opposition parties in Israel have managed to join forces and agreed to form a new coalition government. It's a move that could end the 12-year reign of Benjamin Netanyahu as Prime Minister. I'm joined now by social entrepreneur Errol Margalit, who served five years in the Knesset as a member of the Labour Party. They are now part of this new alliance as well. First off, just how surprised are you that this is taking place? Um, I don't think we're surprised because I think that for a long time, uh, parties and um, part of the, the public across the country was really wanting a change. And if you can imagine, after four elections where Netanyahu could not get uh, elected, it was about time that parties from the left, from the right, from the Arab parties uh, would get together in order to form a coalition to start a new chapter in Israel. But is it enough, really, um, among this diverse political spectrum of parties, of which yours is one, um, to really come together around ousting uh, Benjamin Netanyahu? So many of the issues within Israeli politics are to do uh, with religion or land. I mean, will they even be able to get anything done? I think so. And I think that a lot of the different parts of society that were torn apart, and you saw this in the United States as well with Trump, can now be brought together even if they don't have perfect agreement on certain issues. And I'll give you some examples. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a, not only a social entrepreneur, as I heard you call me, but I'm probably a venture capitalist of the biggest fund in the country and created more uh, companies than anybody else. And some of the entrepreneurs are from the Arab community. And we have been working for so long I'm in Jerusalem. We've been working together, Arabs and Jews, on innovation, on education, in the medical field in order to bring people together. The same thing with the ultra-Orthodox parties, which you heard that was a rift between society. Well, guess what? Young women, primarily women in the ultra-Orthodox community, are now working in technology, and the men are jealous and following as well. So what I'm saying is that after COVID, Israel needs a new chapter of economic development, of working Arabs and Jews within the country, of reaching out a hand to the United Arab Emirates and the other Arab countries in the region, because we've been doing this economically. It's time to do it politically as well. And it's true that we don't have agreement about everything, but there's enough trust among people that are coming from different um, views on different issues in order to give the country a new chapter. It's really interesting to hear you say that, as you as you might hear in my accent, that I'm Irish. And it was really a way that they tried to bring uh, peace within Northern Ireland was through economic uh, means uh, primarily. So, so fascinating to hear uh, that uh, from you, a chairman of JVP, I should say, which is the venture capital firm that you're the head of. Um, but I wonder, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu, even potentially... As an opposition leader, this vote still has to go through. It may not. People, one thing they do agree is that he is a formidable politician. Um, I mean, do you think if this fragile coalition will hold? Well, first of all, we got to differentiate between the short term that may have some hiccups and the longer term. The longer term is Netanyahu after 12 years. Some people like him, some people don't. After 12 years, it's time for a renewal for somebody new, something new is coming. Now, is this coalition going to hold? That's a good question. I know these people personally. I don't agree with all of them on all the views, but I can say one thing. These people are from the new generation in Israel. And one thing that we've been doing well in the technology field, in the economic field, in some of the social areas, is we've been working together with trust. It's time that Israeli politics, that's probably the last frontier in terms of change in Israel, will develop trust in addition to everything else. And, you know, Tel Aviv is the exciting city of Israel. And in Jerusalem, we're acting, Arabs and Jews. I know that you saw the demonstrations. I know that you saw the tension. But who do you think brought people together? It's people that are working. We have the biggest education project with young Arabs, with young Jews, the parents, the principals of the school, the people who are part of the theater uh, group and people who are part of the entrepreneurial group have gotten together in the middle of the strife and said, we want to bring this city together. So yes, 
Tel Aviv is the exciting city of Israel, but Jerusalem, with a new leadership, can become the new exciting city of the Middle East, Errol, facing, facing west. Errol Margulis, thank you so much. We shall watch uh, over the coming hours and days to see how it all transpires. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll get the inspiration from Ireland.